Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Bayonne Today. We have a guest with us today that um, is a woman who has lived a life that some of us would only dream of, but I think you might say almost in a nightmare. She has survived a life and, and is here today to tell us about the beginnings of her life, the middle of it, and where she stands now. I would love for everyone to welcome Patricia Blanchard to our show. She's the author of a book called Patty's Turn. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And obviously, you know, here we see on the set a wonderful plaque that said, says she believed she could and so she did. So she's here today to tell us a little bit about the beginnings of her life and she's going to lead us right into the reason why she's smiling today. <laughs> Patty, tell us tell us a little bit about your family and and how many children were in your family? Uh, there were a total of 14. 14. I was the sixth born of 14. You were sixth of sixth 14. of 14. Okay, now that yes. could be a book in itself. Could be. <laughs> okay, because I did read the first chapter, and in the first chapter, you, you were at that point where you were mentioning as children were being born, how n your life started to change. Right, um, yes. What was a turning point? Um, well, my earliest memory was uh, we lived on 16th Street, downtown Jersey City, mm -hmm. and at the time there were, I believe, eight in a four-room co-water flat. That's excluding my parents, so there were 10 people in such a tiny apartment. Wow. And we were poor, of course, you know, that many children, mm -hmm. but uh, with the help of God, we had help through charity, Sisters mm -hmm. of Charity. Mm -hmm. and, you Was know, that St. Saint, Saint Lucy's? St. Lucy's School, yes. We okay. lived right next door to St. Lucy's School. Mm -hmm. But um, it, was, it was hectic and chaotic growing up, you know, and the more children mom had, mm -hmm. it became harder and harder to survive the everyday, you know, life of, there was never enough of anything mm -hmm. to go around. Mm -hmm. uh, beds, furniture, food, clothing, mm -hmm. you know, so it was pretty hectic, mm -hmm. you know. But um, as the seventh, sixth child born, mom's seventh child, which was my sister Marvine, mm -hmm. She was uh, six months old, and unfortunately, we lost her to an illness called the croup. Wow. And mom didn't have time to mourn her and was already pregnant again. Oh, my goodness. So I think, you know, for me, uh, going back, I try to analyze mm -hmm. when the abuse started. Mm hmm so, of course, I don't remember two, three years old. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to estimate around four or five mm -hmm. is when I realized that, you know, I was being abused at the so hands of my mom. So, you felt as though because your sister, M Marvine, yes. had, um, had passed away, your mom probably didn't have time to mourn the loss of her child. Exactly. And she found herself pregnant with another one. And for whatever reason, you were the target for her frustration and, I guess, her, her loss yes. um, from your sister. Yes. And that seemed to set a pattern <clears throat> that, that lasted for you for your entire life. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Now, back when you were a child, though, of course, there's always a bright side to everyone's life, even in the darkest times. Something always anchors us. There's always something that pushes us along when looking back you would say to yourself my goodness how did I even have the energy and I believe you said it was the Sisters of Charity oh absolutely who helped oh absolutely as a young child you know I was five years old and at the time the charity ran out and my parents couldn't afford to send me to school so I had to wait the extra year mm -hmm. so at six years old I started um, first grade. Okay. And it was Sister Regina. Sister Regina. Sister okay. Regina. Catholic school. We Absolutely. all remember those nuns. She took me under her wing. And after school, I was allowed to go into the convent, and the other sisters would tend to me and cook for me and 
baked me cookies, and it was such a holy, peaceful place to be. Mm -hmm. And I never wanted to go home. Oh my goodness. I never wanted to go home. Okay. I just wanted to stay with the sisters. So you found a safe refuge at the convent? Absolutely. And I guess as it, you know, as you when you would go in and out of school, you kind of felt you you belonged somewhere where there was love and you felt some yes. kind of peace. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now the book talks a little bit also about your first communion? Yes. And about what a special that's bringing a smile to your face. Yes. Yes. What a special day that was and can you tell us why? Well, <clears throat> being as poor as we were, of course, Mom and Dad couldn't afford the uh, communion outfit. And I was sad because all the children in my class were talking about how pretty the pretty dresses they were going to have and this, that, and the other thing. And I sat there sad, thinking, it's not going to happen for me. Mm -hmm. And I accepted it. But Sister Regina pulled me aside mm -hmm. one day before the communion, and she says, Patricia, after school, you and I are going shopping. Oh, my goodness. I, I mean, five years, six years old. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, what? Shopping? You and I in a real department store? Mm -hmm. Because you, know. you mentioned that most of the clothing and things that you had were either hand-me-downs right. or from the Salvation Army. Correct. Which happens to be right down there. I don't know. Was it in the same location it was back right then? right around the corner, actually. Yeah, I know. It's still there. <laughs> is it? Ac oh. Yes, it absolutely is. Okay. So, so going to a department store and actually shopping for something brand new was really a treat for you. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And the fuss, the fuss, I will never forget. I will never forget the fussing sheet over me. Oh, this had to be perfect and that and the hat and Aww. the purse and the gloves. And, and most importantly was my pocketbook. Mm -hmm. She stressed how it was very important for me to bring my pocketbook to school, day mm -hmm. of communion. Mm -hmm. But by the time she was done, it was like, and she had me look in the mirror, and for the first time, I felt so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I felt the love and the tension. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't coming from where I really needed it from. It wasn't coming from your family, but right. far too often um, through life, you find that people come into your life that you never expected would offer you the kindness or yeah. the gentleness yes. that you need but depending on what you believe and who you believe in I right. mean somehow some way you've managed to find people along the way that have have helped you and That's sister true. Regina you know was one of your earliest recollections that yes. things could be different yes um, I know that uh, through the grammar school years you know you had challenges you had <coughs> You know, your family moved quite a few times yes. because they needed more and more space. Yes. And most of, the t most of the time you were moving around, it was in Jersey City. Yes. And then you kind of went up to the Heights, yes. too. Okay. Yes. And mm -hmm. then as your <coughs> life progressed and as it changed, you s obviously would become older and you would start to look for love in, in, as a teenager or as a grown woman. Mm -hmm. and, and explain what happened next in your life. Okay, by the time I was, as I said, 13, I was a very angry and rebellious mm -hmm. teenager. At 17 and a half, I married uh, my first husband, who was 10 years older than I was. Wow. And, of course, the reason I married him was to get out of the house. Okay. Okay. Um, I, three months later, four months later... I found out I was pregnant, mm -hmm. and uh, in that time period, my mom and I reconciled, Okay, and I wanted to get away, get out of my marriage, mm -hmm. which after my son was born, Thomas Walters, mm -hmm. I, I did. Mm -hmm. I left that marriage that was also abusive, okay. both verbally and physically. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, divorced mm -hmm. and moved on. Okay. So you're seeing a bit of a pattern that's starting to form in regards to what you grew up with yes. and a, a pattern of abuse. And that's yes. kind of what we're talking about and what we want everyone to watch who watches this, uh, this show and who would go in and go online? I believe it's an ebook. Yes, it's on yes on Amazon.com. Am Amazon.com, which, mm -hmm. which is where you would find Patty's book to see the the basically the, the pattern that her life um, formed to 
search for love, find love, but it just seemed like each time she did it, it just seemed to get worse. It didn't seem Absolutely. to get better. Absolutely. So what happened next? Okay, then I'll say approximately three years later, <clears throat> I fell in love. Mm -hmm. And um, I fell in love with Tammy and William's father. Mm -hmm. And the relationship was beautiful at first. For the first three years, everything was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Soon after I gave birth to Tammy, things changed. Mm -hmm. Uh, life became hectic again because he acquired the taste for alcohol. Okay. And then it progressed to drugs. Really? Okay. Yes. So that relationship, again, was abusive. Mm -hmm. Not physically, mm -hmm. but verbally. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was a constant battle mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. And um, not unlike what you'd experienced as a young as a young girl, like constantly every day. From what you've said, you were fighting either fighting for food. You were fighting for clothing. You were fighting for a spot on the bed. Right. I remembered reading right. that, and I was like, my goodness, you know, that was that was all you knew. Right. And you just seemed to keep choosing the same scenario right. in your life. Yes. Um, you did mention your children, yes. which we probably should talk about your okay. children. Okay. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, I know, I only know Tammy. I know uh -huh. of Tammy, and some people would recognize that the last name is the same. Right. Tammy Blanchard yes. is, um, What? how does she fall into the lineup? oldest, youngest? Uh, Tammy is the middle child. The middle child, okay. Right. And Tammy is currently filming? She's, she's an actress? She's filming in L.A. at this time, an independent film. Okay. Okay, and um, don't ask me the title because okay. I don't know. That's okay, Mom. I know you have the, you're watching your grandchildren. <laughs> yes, though. Okay. yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so um, she is filming, and I'm watching the granddaughter. Mm -hmm. which is my pleasure. Okay. But um, getting back to uh, Tammy, you know, this is, I think this was the big, the turning point. The turning point when you realize that, yes, this, right. is, inter this is really interesting. This is the turning point. Um, Tammy, uh, my wonderful, beautiful sister Sally, had promised all her nieces and nephews when they would have turned 10 years old, mm -hmm. she would give them a surprise birthday party. Okay. So here it is. Tammy is about to turn 10 years old and already witnessing the abuse in the relationship with her mother and father. Mm -hmm. She um, went to her father and said, Daddy, please promise me mm -hmm. that you won't come home drunk today because mm -hmm. all my friends from school are going to be okay. here. So her daddy, being daddy's little girl, mm -hmm. he promised her and believe me, I prayed he kept his promise. Mm -hmm. So the party's in full swing. Knock comes on the door. I open the door. He falls in. Oh my He's goodness. drunk as a skunk. Mm -hmm. And I'm begging him to please be quiet. Don't let her, don't let her mm -hmm. hear you. No, that didn't work. So suddenly Tammy came out from the living room. Mm -hmm. And I looked at her, I looked at him. I looked at her again, and all I could see was the tears just flowing mm -hmm. down her face, and my heart was so broken for her. It was then a bell went off in my head, mm -hmm. and I said, Lord, what am I doing to my children? Mm -hmm. Well, it was that day, that very day, I threw him out, mm -hmm. and I never looked back. Now, when you threw him out, tell us what you had um, as far as money or security or did you own the house or okay so you got the idea because you probably saw in her eyes the same sorrow that you felt for yes. most of your life and you broke the pattern and yes. I have to really congratulate you for that Thank because you. I know in breaking a pattern you get the idea that's one thing but right. what happened next tell me what you had in your wallet nothing not a penny not a penny okay not a penny, okay. not a penny. So that after the party was over, it was nighttime, and I consoled my children, and I told them, don't worry, everything's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Mom is going to take care of everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, I tucked them in bed, kissed them goodnight, told them I loved them. I went into the kitchen, and I sat there, 
and I cried my eyes out mm -hmm. and I began to pray and I said Lord what am I going to do how will I survive mm -hmm. with three children I will never make it on welfare mm -hmm. what am I going to do and it's almost as if I was hearing a voice within my head saying look around mm -hmm. look around and so I did and what I seen it, it shocked me oh I'm a very good cleaner mm -hmm. I mean you could eat off, you could eat off my floors mm -hmm. that's how clean I was and I said oh gee wow maybe I maybe I could start cleaning house okay and so one thing led to another mm -hmm. I started calling up cleaning services mm -hmm. trying to get a, an idea of quotes what they would charge for charge? three room four room mm -hmm. gathered my information educated myself mm -hmm. and then I started my own cleaning business is that was that blue ribbon blue ribbon cleaning blue service. ribbon cleaning yes services. I'm okay. sure some of them out there had my service <laughs> oh okay so where did you do, where was this business located mostly? it was located in Bayonne okay. we service all of Bayonne Jersey City Hoboken Weehawken we pretty much went all over New Jersey, mm -hmm. you know, and it started out where I was doing three, four apartments a day myself. Really? Myself. Mm -hmm. And the the struggle and the strive to just put that smile back on my children's mm -hmm. face mm -hmm. is what kept me going. Mm -hmm. it, it, I mean, as tired as I was, I didn't care. Mm -hmm. I had to make life better for my children, mm -hmm. and that's what I did. You certainly did. I, I tried my best. <laughs> my goodness. And you, and you live to tell the tale, which is even better. But that's another chapter of the book mm. that we will touch on um, very lightly. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that turning point in your life mm -hmm. when um, your, your husband, Tammy, it was Tammy's dad, Tammy's correctly? Dad. Okay. Correct. And your two sons, I don't want to leave them out. Their That's Thomas Walters okay. and William Blanchard. Okay. Um, there was a point in, in Patricia's life that he wasn't your ex-husband yet? or Who are we speaking of? The, where the, the most serious abuse took place. Okay, yes, he was my husband. He was still your husband, okay. And can you tell us a little bit about what happened? Well, um... I'll make it try to make it brief. Uh, we married in August. Mm -hmm. I, th I believe it was August twentieth. Mm -hmm. um, three months later, mm -hmm. December third, nineteen ninety nine. I woke. I woke to the struggle, fighting for my life, mm -hmm. uh, which I was being beat brutally beaten mm -hmm. by him mm -hmm. uh, with a hammer. Reason being, you caught him stealing from your brother's bar, I believe? Right. Okay. Right. right. And you confronted him? Yes, I confronted him. Mm -hmm. And I had told him that the marriage was over mm -hmm. and he need. I gave him two weeks notice okay. that he would have to leave the house. Mm -hmm. And it was the Thursday before. Um, so he, I had, I, I don't want to get into details here. Um, well, I, it was a, it was another turning point. In your it life. was another turning and a turning point that took me many many years to recover. Okay, which brings us to the reason why you wrote the book. Yes. Okay. Yes. So see, everything's yes. kind of connected. Yes. Even though yes. we had no idea how it would be. Yes. The book was a form of therapy. Absolutely. For you, you yes. didn't intend on writing a book. No. Tell us about how this all happened. Okay, um, the severity of the damage done to my brain, I had lost much of my memory. Mm -hmm. And through therapy, after years of therapy, it was recommended that I start to write down things that I remembered, the bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. And so I did. And years later, I wind up with over 1,400, I mean 14, yes, 400, 400. I'm sorry. 400 pages okay and so of your life story of my life okay. all the memories started to come back and I, I think it was 2002 I stopped writing mm -hmm. and one day I decided to just sit down and see what I had written and 
I relived my whole painful life mm -hmm. and I sat and I cried and I cried and I said my god I'm a survivor of abuse mm -hmm. this is terrible and it was then that I decided wow if I could just touch one woman out there mm -hmm. that may be suffering mm -hmm. abuse like me can I save her mm -hmm. and that will make my story worthwhile mm -hmm telling my story and saving one person mm -hmm. is all that mattered and that's when it became a book and that's when it became a book and anyone who's looking at the show today and sees the cover this is the cover of the book it's uh, the story is called Patty's turn and uh, Andy our producer recognized in the picture that it's definitely a picture that was taken in Bayonne Park Right, so we always try to tie in some Bayonne, uh, some of your Bayonne connections with uh, with our storylines and also with what's going on here. And this particular picture was you as a bride, yes, in Bayonne Park. And yes. I mean, what what girl doesn't dream about her day, uh, you know, as being a bride and mm -hmm. finding love and thinking that you'll ride into the sunset and it'll be a happily ever after story. Mm. Uh, but I do happen to know that your story is a happily ever after story. Yes, it is. Because after years and years of struggling, yes. you found true love. I think we've determined it was nine years ago, did you say? Eight. Eight years ago. Actually, today is my anniversary. Today is your anniversary. The eighth year. And yes. you're celebrating eight yes. years of finding love, having yes. gone through many trials yes. and tribulations. And obviously, the man you found love with is a friend of mine, mm -hmm. and his name is? Joseph Calamito. Joseph Calamito. <laughs> and um, his name brought a smile to your face. Yes. And I'm imagining that you're finally coming to understand a bit about what real love and real devotion is. Right. Um, yes. Elaborate a little bit about when you met Joe and how you knew it was different. Okay. Um, after I started to, you know, come around and my psychological state of mind was stable, mm -hmm. uh, and Tammy's career was taking off, she no longer needed me to drive her back and forth to New York, mm -hmm. I decided to, you know, live my life. So I went to real estate school. Oh, okay. And I got my real estate license. Mm -hmm. And then I got bored with that. Mm -hmm. So then I went on to be a DJ. And That's right. You were a yes. DJ. So people yes. in the audience will recognize you probably yes. from that. Yes. Okay. And the name of your? Uh, it was Purple Shades. Purple Shades. Purple okay. Shades. And yes. so you DJed in local um, yes. pubs all yes. around town? Yes. And then mm -hmm. I'm imagining that you, you met an awful lot of people that way too. Yes, I did. Okay. And I believe you said that Joe would come in and listen to the music? Yes. And then one day he came up to you and you said, why are you here all the time? Right. And I found it quite strange that a man of his age and character would be in a place like uh, that I was at. Am okay. I allowed to mention names? Of course you know. can mention names. Well, I was playing in the Venice at this time, and the Venice is a young crowd. Okay. You know, and here he is over 50 years old, and he's coming in there always dressed fine, looking good. Uh huh. And he would show up constantly, and then finally one day I said, you know, I'm going to ask him. Mm hmm. I sensed it. Okay. But but he never came out and said it. Mm hmm. So the one day I'm, I'm doing my job, he walked in. And I tapped him on the shoulder and I said, excuse me, Joe, what are you doing in a place like this? Uh-huh. He said, I come to see you. Wow. I said, okay, and why? He said, because I'd like to take you out. I said, well, it's about time. Oh, my goodness. I, this was over a year. Really? Yes, it was over a year. And from then on. You've been together. We've been together, and I and I've never been happier in my life. Really, he is a wonderful, wonderful husband. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing he won't do for the love of his family, mm -hmm. his grandchildren, mm -hmm. and my children. He is the only and first man that my children ever totally accepted, really? and they love him to death. Mm -hmm. You know, so here we are. We have a very happy ending. <laughs> it's a happy ending, but it's also a story that I believe has a few more chapters, even though they're not in the book yet. Mm. I know that your intention, of course, is to help young women, help older, oh. even older women who are in, a, in a, a, a 
cycle of abuse. There's no age on abuse. There is no age on abuse. No, that's absolutely true. No. And I mean, whether it be physical, psychological, spiritual abuse. I mean, women have always been put in a place where they always felt they needed to have a man in right. order for their lives to move ahead and to thrive. Right. And you know, you empowered yourself by your cleaning service and mm -hmm. by dedicating your life to your children. Right. And um, you know, I I know what it took to to have to have Tammy be as successful as she, as she was. I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's a mother behind the scenes who's there for their child and saying, I remember you told me when you looked at her when she came out after you bought her a pair of jeans. Right. And she came out and then she put her hair out and said, I'm going to model these jeans for you. And once again, that light bulb went off. Right. And you said, this, this child is, is different. She really right. has some kind of a future ahead of her. Yes. Yes. And, and you used what you knew mm -hmm. to help her right. become who she's becoming. Yes. And I don't think that you're too far behind. Mm -hmm. um, I think that you probably will be a role model for women over, let's say over 30. How's that? That's fine. Is that good? That's fine. Okay. That is fine. You know, th that is exactly why I, I felt compelled to to you know have this book edited by the way by my dear friend Sally uh, Deering. Okay, yes, yeah, Sally okay. did the show. Mm -hmm. Yes, she edited the book for me. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I was compelled to make it into a book and we're presently working on the um, hardcover. Oh good, okay. Yes, we're working on that and um, it, it, it's important to me to empower you know women mm -hmm. and and just stand up for themselves mm -hmm. you know and get on with life well you're an inspiration to to me you're an thank inspiration you. I'm sure to everyone that's listening thank and you. I want you to know that you did a wonderful job <laughs> thank you and your so smile much. is beautiful and <laughs> I, I love a happy ending <laughs> and I absolutely love hearing that there's always hope yes. even when you're in your darkest darkest hour there's always either it's a guardian angel or whomever it is looking out for you. You just have to believe that yes. it's possible. And I hope that you'll get um, you'll get Patty's book and you'll uh, give her a little high five, maybe at the Shoprite <laughs> or on Broadway because she lives in Bayonne. She's staying in Bayonne. And do you love Bayonne? I love Bayonne. She loves Bayonne too. I love Bayonne. So there you go. We all love Bayonne, and we so look forward to uh, seeing you at the next on the next episode of Bayonne today. Thank you so much. Thank you for having.